Hey friends, thanks for tuning in. Uh, in Isaiah chapter number 31, uh, he gives a warning to the people to remember that the source of their security is not the things of the world or other nations and their power, but always God. And I think that there is a temptation for us frequently to say one thing about trusting God, but acting in such a way that we really are trusting in the resources that we might accumulate or the powers that are available to us on earth and miss out that Christ himself is our source. In chapter 31, verse 1, Isaiah says to the people, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses who trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. And yet he is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. The Egyptians are man and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. I'm going to stop right there because I, I want you to realize that. So here they are in Israel and um, the forces that are coming upon them, uh, first the Assyrians and, and then uh, Babylon and later the Medo-Persians take over. And their first reaction was not to fall on their knees and repentance and seek the, the, the deliverance of God. Their first instinct was, well, let's run down to Egypt because uh, Egypt is strong. Egypt can protect us. They started to rely on horses and chariots because they saw the things of the world as their strength and their security. But he reminds them, the Egyptians are man and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. He has said to them, why don't you look to the Holy One of Israel? Why don't you consult the Lord? And friends, even as Christians who have the indwelling life of God in us, isn't it easy to be subtly distracted when under stress and in need and feeling threatened to in immediately consult the world, the ideas of the world, the things of the world, the things that the world say will give you security instead of consulting the Lord? Egypt's just flesh, They're not Israel. When you read through the history of Israel, and especially as you go through First and Second Samuel and then uh, Kings and Chronicles, you see how many times in their past that God delivered them from impossible odds when they trusted in him. And yet they are afraid. And yet they're looking back to the world. They're looking to the strength of the world. Now, as a child of God, who has God's indwelling life, what do you need? So Hebrews 13 is a beautiful verse, two verses here that I want to point out, five and six. Because the writer of Hebrews says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Now let it settle deep in your heart. Even when the book of Hebrews was being written thousands of years ago, 
there is a temptation for man to think that security was going to be found in money. And so in our day, we think if we just have our house and the mortgage is paid and we have our 401k built up and our retirement, we have enough, then we have security. And all you ever need is just one more economic downturn and you realize, wow, that's really not secure. My trust should never be in money or resources or the strength of man, but only in God. I don't have to be afraid of man. Why? Because he promised he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And that's your promise too. Is it good to make money and have a job and work? Well, absolutely. But don't face the problems of God strictly from your intellect or the views of the world. Go to him for counsel. The Holy One of Israel. The one who you profess to be your Lord. And as Lord, he's the one who reigns over us. In Psalm chapter number 20, uh, verse 6 and 8, the psalmist says it uh, uh, another way. He says, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. So children of God, don't trust in chariots. Don't trust in horses. Don't trust in the stock market. Don't trust in the banking system. Don't trust in the governments of the world. Trust in him. For you are his anointed and he saves. The world system will collapse, but we have been given the power and strength to rise and stand upright. He makes us to stand. I know at times that you look around the world and the system and, you know, the threats of the economy and how everything is, seems to be in a bad place. But remember this, he lives in you and you are the object of his love. And in all of our weakness, he is our strength. He saves us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. So let's be intentional and in not letting anything be a substitute for his rule and reign in our lives. Our trust is in him, the name of the Lord our God. Be encouraged. He's with you and he'll never leave you. I love you.